Hey guys, it's Laura from Cool Mom and Collected, and today I'm sharing how I DIY'd this beautiful farmhouse sign without a stencil or cricket. If you want to find out how, then keep on watching, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more weekly videos. First off, I'll take you through an overlay of the tools and items that you'll need, and I'll also link them in the description box below. A wooden board, trim of your choice, reflective adhesives, chalk paint, wood stain, polyurethane, more chalk paint, paint brushes, and a sanding sponge. I was able to find everything I needed at my local Lowe's or Home Depot. I also quickly have to share this moment of me picking out enormous trim and cutting it myself with a handsaw for the very first time. I was so proud of myself for measuring correctly and to the man who I didn't know was waiting to use the handsaw, thanks for being patient during all my victory dances. I was super happy with how it turned out and so proud of myself. I then grabbed these adhesive reflectives in the stencil aisle to use in a bit of a different way. Sadly, there were some letters I needed that they didn't have, but I'll share how I fixed that later in the video. I sanded the board and trim to take care of any sharp edges and to allow for the paint and stain to absorb better. I then took a wet rag and wiped down the board and trim prior to painting and sanding to give me a nice, clean surface. Don't forget to thoroughly mix and stir that paint. I'm a bit crazy, but I did choose matte white and got my painting on with two coats. Here is how the first coat looked. And here is how the second coat looked. I chose the same stain and flagstone to match the bunk bed gates my husband and I DIY'd in the kids bunk room. You can see how I DIY'd these gates in my Instagram highlight called bunk bed gates and watch our renovation video here. After applying a coat of stain and letting it sit for two to three minutes, I took a rag and wiped them thoroughly in a smooth and swift motion. The result was a lovely stain absorbed into the trim and I couldn't be happier. Remember these reflective adhesives? I decided to first cut each letter out. Oh, see that blue hose in the frame? My hubby was concerned it would ruin my shot, so he so sweetly went out in the cold and removed it. I love you, hubby. Thank you. After cutting each letter out, I traced the letters that I needed two of. I needed to create an extra K as well as an extra E. I also needed to create a T since Home Depot didn't have one, as well as an A, which I used other letters to maintain the same height and width. And to be honest, I don't know how I got that A. <laughs> Because, I mean, it was just kind of complicated, but it turned out pretty good. I then measured my board so I could properly lay out the letters, and then I began to trace. In case any of you are wondering why I chose Take a Hike for my sign, my family and I are full-time RVers and we absolutely love the outdoors. I plan to put this sign above our entry and exit door so that when we leave the RV, it encourages us to very literally get outside and take a hike, as well as encourages us to, hey, take a hike, made it. <laughs> Okay guys, so this is the part that I am slightly nervous about. I was gonna do real stencils, but I didn't realize how difficult those were, and I didn't have all the tools that I needed. So instead, I am going with paint brushes and black chalk paint, which I heard will be great. <laughs> we're gonna do this. I think I'm just gonna like try my best to outline it, maybe let the outline dry and then fill in the inside. I'm not really sure, but it's gonna be a fun day to be an artist for the first time, so wish me luck.
I was so nervous to paint the letters and I had a lot of practice runs as you previously saw, but oh my word, if I can encourage you, I totally got better the further down the letters that I got. I mean, this is so like, what's the word? Mm, satisfying, is it not? Like watching these letters get filled. pretty amazing how much better I got with each letter that I did but for those little areas that you can see I went out of the lines don't worry keep on watching I'm gonna share what I did to fix those the after is pretty amazing I mean I love how homemade it looks but those little tiny spills out of the letters were driving me a bit nuts. So as you see, I got some white chalk paint once it dried and I decided to go for it and cover up the black paint. I'm doing a good job. My husband knew I would freak out if I screwed up. So funny story, when I was about to start doing this, I was gonna use like a sponge brush. I don't know what I was thinking, but my husband was like, Laura, I just wanna let you know, I think it looks amazing, and I think that there's a very high chance that if you touch this, you're gonna screw it up and be devastated. He really reeled me in, and I was able to use my critical thinking, use a thin paintbrush, and guys, look how good it turned out. I love it. So proud of myself. Before applying the polyurethane, make sure to thoroughly mix your paint can to avoid bubbles. I painted two thin coats, but just be sure you don't glop it on or your polyurethane will dry in goopy white residue and that is not cute. If you keep it in thin coats, then you won't experience that and make sure that you dry in between your two coats. As you can see, once the polyurethane goes on and dries, it will go from that white foggy look to nice and clear. Here's another exciting moment. I am getting my wood trim into place so I can decide which side of the trim pleases my eye most. And as you guys can see, I am very, very excited. We decided to go with super glue instead of hammer and nails because we thought it might just look a little bit more seamless. And we read reviews that this works really well on small wood projects. Hello, how are you? Good. I've been working on a DIY. You, you can come see what it is if you want. I'm a total newbie, but you know, I cut the trim and okay. I painted and I sanded and I stenciled by hand, like, Whoa. so it's, it's just like rewarding regardless, yes. you know? Yes, yes. So yeah, it feels real good. How exciting. Thanks. Hi. And here it is, guys. I cannot believe that I made this with my own two hands. Beautiful store-bought items do not stand a chance up against DIY projects. Am I right? Let me know in the comments below. I hope this video not only inspires you to take a hike, but to take a risk and to try something you've never done before because you may just surprise yourself. Don't forget to like, and subscribe for more weekly videos. And let me know in the comments below if you feel inspired after this video to DIY your own farmhouse sign. Tag me on Insta if you do, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.